What's going on everybody? Drew over at Future Strategy Gaming coming at you with a quick video. Um, we're going on the lodestone. This is a direct letter from Yoshi P regarding the growth player population and plans to alleviate world congestion. We're not going to go over the whole thing. There is going to be a link in the description if you want to check out this article for yourself and you haven't already. We are going to go through some expert excerpts. I've already taken a look at this uh, and kind of want to highlight a couple of different things. So... We'll, we'll read the first section. Greeting Final Fantasy XIV players. This is your producer and director, Naoki Yoshida, or Yoshi P. First and foremost, I'd like to extend my thanks to all of you for your continued support. Development for our latest expansion pack, Endwalker, continues as we focus on implementing content and transitioning to the check and polish phase. Expectations for 6.0 are high and have resulted in an increased interest in Final Fantasy XIV, especially in North America and Europe where we are currently experiencing an extreme influx of new players. Today, I would like to go into detail about the server congestion resulting from this influx and the steps we are taking to address it. This message is a long one, so please bear with me. Right there, addresses the issue. Hey, I know that things are going wrong, you know, because of this increased influx. Let's talk about it, which is something that you want from a game developer. You want some open line of communication and you're happy to see something like this. So... As mentioned from above, Final Fantasy XIV is currently experiencing a dramatic increase in players. This increase is not only limited to the global version, but also the locally operated Chinese and Korean versions as well. In particular, the increase, the increase in North American and EU region players over the past two weeks has been both staggering and unexpected. That many players are now having difficulty logging in and creating new characters due to server congestion. For this, we deeply apologize. Let's just stop for a second. A game developer is apologizing to us for not having enough space within their game. That's incredible to me. Um, you know, someone to be like, hey, we just didn't expect the game to get this busy. And we're sorry. Like, that's awesome. You know, and what's great is they have thought out plans on how to make it easier. So, again, we're not going to read through all this stuff. The stuff I do want to show is... Login caps. Difference in the login caps occur due to the differences in the number of worlds per data center, as well as the differences in matching server performance. So you got your different data centers. Uh, you know, you've got Oceanic, which will be coming at the end of the year, J uh, Japan, EU, North America, and then I think that's it. Are you right now? Yeah. Anyways, for North America, you have an average of eight servers per data world, if you will. Um, I'm on Aether. So there's eight on that one. Big excerpt right here. Continued optimization for this new equipment has allowed us, as of July 16th, to increase the maximum number of simultaneous logins across the NA data center by 18,000, roughly 750 per world server. That's fantastic. You know, that I think there's two data centers now that I think about it. And that right there is 36,000 new players. That matching server upgrade in EU that you see right here, while currently planned for the immediate future, is still pending. So they haven't been able to get to it. They are working on it. Until the upgrade is implemented, it will be difficult to raise the world cap logins to the same degree as those of the North American worlds. They are working on it. Despite the aforementioned cap increase over the weekend of 17th and 18th of July, several North American servers experience periods of 6 to 7 hours at maximum logging capacity. As a result, character creation was unavailable for long periods of time, and the players faced an average login wait time of 10 to 20 minutes. With players residing on worlds in the European data center, weekend login times were as long as 40 minutes. We deeply apologize for the situation in both regions. So they're working on a fix. They have a fix. They're telling us at least that they're working on it. For NA, it's already come out. For EU, they're going to be coming close to it. 10 to 20 minutes is not that long if you've been doing this for a long time. If you have been in the MMORPG genre for a while, there were times where it was hours, literal hours. I remember when I used to play World of Warcraft back in the early 2000s when the game was um, kind of NBC, late, uh, late classic, well, vanilla. Uh, there'd be times I'd go to school 8 a.m. and I would log in right there and it would still be in queue by the time I got home at 3 o'clock. Seven hours in queue. It's a long time. Just think about it for a second. So character creation and login wait times. When a server has reached its maximum capacity, any additional players attempting to log in will be placed in a queue and must wait for a player already on the server to log out before being admitted. It's 
very straightforward, very simple on that one. Um, this, this is very interesting right here. First, we asked those not actively engaged in the game to log out of their characters rather than remaining logged in while idle. Second, we request that you avoid creating new characters during peak congestion time. So the log out while you're going, um, I get it. Some people log in and they want to stay in all day because that used to be the norm. And that way they didn't have to deal with the queue at the end of it. Them kindly asking you to do it is a great first step. And then avoiding new character creations during peak congestion times. Uh, you know, that takes a different server load, if you will. So they want you to make sure that you're not taking up space. We ask that you patiently remain in queue should you encounter wait times. This is totally normal. I had like a 25 minute queue last night. Not a big deal. I got plenty of stuff around that I can do. Also, I think what's nice is right now, it has been consistent for me depending on what time of day that I log in. So at some point you can kind of get into a consistent mindset and say, okay, at this point, it usually takes about 20 minutes. I'm going to try to log in now, go do something, and then I can come back and hopefully I'll be in game. Now, this one is really, this whole excerpt right here is something I want to point out because I think it's great. Please also note that in order to prioritize our paying customers, the login queue is not available to players using the free trial version, regardless of whether it occurs due to the surge of logins or a world reaching its capacity. Logging in will only be possible for these players after a world's login queue is cleared. We once again apologize for the inconvenience, but ask for your understanding on this point. I'm not advocating that you buy the game. You could play the game and not like it at all. Totally fine. By the way, there's going to be a link in the description to our free trial in the first place. The big deal that I have is they give such a huge free trial anyway. There's no time restrictions. You get an entire expansion on top of the base game. I think a company that needs to make money in order to increase their um, infrastructure, asking people who are playing for free to wait and aid or and secondly not allowing them to to be able to log in if there is a queue time is totally respectful i mean you're playing a free game it sucks that it's not available i want you to experience it with me but at the same time i think you have to understand like hey these other people should get priority you know it's like uh disneyland disney world everyone is available to purchase a ticket and get in and then wait their turn to get into it if you would like to pay additional money, which is the non-free trial players, you can get a little bit farther ahead in the line. Those people opted to pay that money, and therefore they are entitled to the service that they are purchasing. I think the same logic can be applied here. Hey, you're, you're opting to pay for a monthly subscription fee. There should be a little bit of caveat that you get to go ahead of the line for the people who aren't going to pay that subscription fee. I think that's very fair. Next one we'll talk about is the automatic logout. This is something that is uh, new, something that you've probably experienced in other MMOs, but is new for Final Fantasy XIV. As an emergency measure to combat congestion, we are also planning the early implementation of an auto logout feature originally slated for the expansion launch. With the release of 5.58, if no input is detected from a character for an extended period of time, from what we've heard, it's 30 minutes, the character will be automatically logged out. This feature will further be expanded to address the surge of logins expected for the launch of Endwalker. We understand that this feature will not be most popular with our players, but would like to assure you that this is an effective means to temporarily combat congestion. We apologize for the inconvenience its implementation may cause, and thank you for bearing with us to ensure that the game remains accessible during the time. So two things. One, I think that's pretty fair. You're not doing anything in the game. You're just taking up a slot. I, you know, if you're running scripts trying to buy housing, like that's to me that, you know, you shouldn't be doing that in the first place. But I think it's very fair for them to say, hey, listen, you're not even playing. We're going to get someone who wants, wants to play. Cool. Secondly, uh, this has been implemented with 5.58 as of recording right now. It's Floral Friday. Uh, so that being said, this came out on Tuesday. I played yesterday, and at one point, I had to go AFK. I didn't know how long it was going to be for. It happened to be four hours. While I was doing that, I was in the Crystal Tower series, and I had clicked on somebody who was going to give me the final quest where you, f you figure out what's going on inside the actual tower. I did not accept the quest. It just had the quest box up in the right corner. And I clicked on that, got pulled away, and had to disappear for four hours. When I came back, 
the game was still on. I was still open on that one. So I don't know if that's a workaround, a bug, or if it's intended. I did not do anything during those four hours. I didn't touch my mouse. I wasn't even in this room. So if that's a workaround, hey, I just gave you a tip on how you can keep your character logged in. If it was unintended, don't get mad at me if it doesn't work. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so the current situation has compelled us to reevaluate this timeline to, to determine the possible speed up of this process. They wanted to get that Oceana data center sometime right after release. They were hoping to push it before release. But with the situation that is happening globally, can't say it because of YouTube, uh, you know, they haven't been able to get their boots on the ground and be able to do this. So problem one, insufficient servers due to the semiconductor shortage. This is a worldwide problem. The pandemic has seen an extreme drop in semiconductor production in factories across the globe. This coupled with the increased demand for electronics due to people working at home has resulted in an international shortage of semiconductors that in turn has resulted in a prolonged delay in the delivery of our servers we ordered for our data centers. This is totally, this, this is not just a 14 issue. So if you're mad at them that they haven't come out with this features yet, you got to be mad at the whole world right now in order to be fair because everyone is dealing with it coming from cell phone production to even the smallest things. You know, you look at computers, GPUs, you, you look at anything that requires electronics with semiconductor production has had issues around the world. Obviously, that's ramping up now as the world continues to open up a little bit, but expect to see a shortage, I would say, for the next six to eight months and people will get their production. They'll try to move a little bit faster, but these are expensive parts. You don't want to rush this, right? All right. So problem number two, travel restrictions. This is a big one. You know, uh, global travel restrictions due to the pandemic have prevented our server infrastructure team from physically visiting the data centers, causing a considerable reduction in work efficiency. All the servers that we play on had to be physically set up before we could ever touch them. So that being said, the not being able to actually be in person is going to completely hinder what you can do. Uh, while over the past year and a half, the team has managed to work remotely with overseas staff on the Oceana data center, it has been a challenge. A challenge that our staff will have to face again as we look to expand our server capacity in Europe and North America. That said, many members of the team have been proactively getting their vaccinations and are looking into options such as passports for, vaccination or for vaccinated people as we plan in-person visits to data center. Um, you know, the world's starting to open up a little bit more. There obviously is still some, some worry, uh, variants, all that stuff. I'm not going to talk about that. What I am going to talk about is they're working as hard as they can to get these features in there. And they are hoping that us as a player base can be okay and be calm. And I think that's totally reasonable. I think that, you know, you can understand, Hey, they aren't, they aren't doing this to punish us. If anything, they are doing this to help us. And Oceana data server is going to completely open up that region down there i mean congrats to all those australians who don't have to worry about ping if they are trying to play at a uh, in a data center that is japan europe if they want to play na um so you know i i think it's very respectable that they came out and apologized for how slow it's going but the fact is is they didn't need to do this they're they're happy to do so because they as a company want to uh, want to make sure that we're happy but It'll come when it comes. We just got to be okay with it. And we will experience. I know that during Endwalker, we are all going to experience server login issues. Uh, you know, it'll be a little bit alleviated from free trials not being able to get in in the first place. Um, but I, I think it's very reasonable for them to be like, hey, we're sorry, but we're doing our best. So I'll read the whole conclusion. In conclusion, as producer, the responsibility for being unable to predict the current influx of new players falls to me. The days before an expansion launch are supposed to be ones of excitement, but instead they brought many players grief. And for that, I personally am extremely sorry. For years, we have watched devoted players from around the world stream their time within Final Fantasy XIV. And now we sit in awe while new fans join their ranks. As we enter our final push in the development of Endwalker, it is this constant flow of positive energy that motivates all of us on the development and operations team to carry on. Nothing can compare to the feeling we get watching you enjoy playing the game we've created. We are aware of the burden we have placed on our player base and are working diligently to lighten it in the coming weeks and months. We will continue to develop measures to combat server congestion and we'll keep up to date with any and all developments in this area. Thank you again for your continued support. 
Naoki Yoshida, aka Yoshi P, Final Fantasy XIV producer and director. Again, I'll go back to what I said earlier. Just the fact that he personally has come out, made a statement, and apologized to us, the player base, because he couldn't keep up is awesome. I mean, it's great that the game's growing at such an exponential rate that they couldn't even fathom. You know, they, as a company, if you're producing products like this, you expect growth to a degree. But they probably were like, well, we hope we get 2 to 3% growth. These are just fake numbers. This means nothing. 2 to 3% growth. And all of a sudden, they got 10 to 15%. And they were like, well, what the fuck do we do now? <laughs> you know? So that being said, I think it's awesome that you have a development team who comes out and they're like, we're sorry this is happening. They take so much pride in their work that they apologize to us, the consumer. For not being able to deliver. I think it's great. If you watch FanFest. You saw the whole Soken uh, stuff that was going on. These guys continue to work their asses off. During you know quarantine. And are continuing to make sure. That we get the game. That we hope for. And you know. it. I, I very much made sure to say hope for. And not deserved. Because the reality of the situation is. Is we don't deserve anything. It's nice that they're able to produce. On this level but we don't deserve anything and anyone who has that mindset should probably think about changing it because realistically we as consumers have the option to say we want to buy or not buy and uh you know i i think too many players go into it mindset i've given x company x amount of dollars over the course of its life you know you look at call of duty franchise franchises call of duty final fantasy world of warcraft and everything blizzard has spawned uh, you know, EverQuest, all these game franchises that go Gears of War, you know, players who feel like they are owed or deserve something because they've paid for so long, you don't have to buy the product. You don't have to buy the product. And the fact that a development team comes out and says they're sorry and wants to make sure that the money that you've spent feels like you have you know, being given something that you paid for, I think is great. I think it's fantastic that you have a company that is this aware of the situation and are going out of their way to make sure that they give you, the consumer, the best possible experience. So that's going to be all for this one. As always, I'm Drew from Future Strategy Gaming. If you like the video, make sure you hit like. If you want to see uh, any of my other content, hit that subscribe notification. Fuck, if you didn't like the video, hit the dislike button. It's not going to affect me, right? Take care. Peace.